of armor, 4 things we wish, we knew before starting this. With the release of the first Pokemon Sword and Shield, DLC The Isle of Armor. Nine months after the debut of the new Nintendo Switch game, there has been a lot of expectation about Isle of Armor. It's not a question, the expansion meets and surpass our expectations, but in this video, we will cover four things we wish we knew before starting the Isle of Armor expansion. This is Lonely Mimikyu and thank you for support. We are growing this channel, so if you haven't, subscribe and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss any new videos, and if you enjoyed this one, please tap the like button, and share this video with friends and family. If you find this video entertaining, please leave a comment as we may do move of this format if you like it. Without further delay, let's jump right into it. Number 4. Bring a powerful team. Since the Isle of Armor has a level scaling system that scales to the player's gym badges, it may not be immediately apparent that a powerful team will be necessary for completing this DLC. However, there are some very difficult fights within this expansion, such as the final fight with Mustard, and a few battles with either Clara, or Avery, the rival character for the protagonist. Bringing a team that is well over the scaled level, will ensure that players can have an easy run of this expansion pack. We recommend a team at least level 80 for an easy sweep. Number 3. Sharpidos are swimming around in the ocean. As mentioned above, when traveling on the ocean, Sharpedo will chase after the player, attempting to pull them into a battle. This is a very annoying mechanic, however, players can plan for it by always being observant, while in the water, and not allowing a Sharpedo to get too close behind them, because it will probably initiate a battle. Number 2. Stock up on supplies before, traveling to the Isle of Armor, there aren't any traditional Pokemarts present on the Isle of Armor, and if players are planning to adventure, before heading into the dojo for the first time, then they will want to be stocked up on Pokeballs and healing items. Buying a few Hyper Potions, Revives, and assorted Pokeballs will allow the player to have an easy ride while adventuring in the wilds of the Isle of Armor. Number 1. There is a ton of required grinding for Cub Fu, before finishing the DLC. This feature is one of the most important things to know about, the Isle of Armor DLC before starting it, because the player will have to do, a fair bit of grinding in the middle of their dojo adventure. When players are initially given Cub Fu for the first time, it will only be level 10, which means that the player will have to grind it to level 60 to 70, to have any hopes of defeating the Tower of Water, or the Tower of Darkness. It is best to take a bunch of XP candies for this expansion, because otherwise, the player will have to battle a lot of trainers and wild Pokemon, to level up their Cup Fu. And this wraps up today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. Do you agree with the list? Let me know what you think and we might do a part 2 on this series. I see you in the next video, Lonely Mimikyu, out.